Welcome back, everyone, to Old World Blues. I'm your host, Mr. Mokal and which we're uh, you know, playing as the Britannian Empire. But we got to talk about a late night stroll as we are trying to get into a new Victoria. King Yorkton descended from the royal carriage, which had been parked in a side alley of the city center. As he lifted his hood over his head and started making his way to the high street, he heard Tobias call out to him. Please, sir, I have to make sure to return within an hour or so, and holler if you run into any trouble. Yorkton waved him off. It had been hard enough to convince Alcander to let him take a stroll in the public unsupervised, and even then, he had agreed to go, to go incognito. He wasn't about to viol validate those concerns. After moseying around Dauphin's busy marketplace for a few minutes, Yorkton finally reached the royal port. As a sight to behold, in just a few months, the king had turned the wharf from a little more than a decaying landing bay into a bustling shipyard, a true jewel of the kingdom. Docked next to the beautiful cobblestone streets was a seemingly endless row of everything from mighty galleys to modern state-of-the-art speedboats. And even in the dead of night, he could spot workers dashing to and from the nearby warehouses, their bosses perhaps hoping to get ahead of the competitors on monthly quotas. Hey, out of the way, old man, a scruffy-looking worker blurted out as he brushed past Yorkton. Good, the king thought to himself. That was the kind of spunk needed to restore the might of the realm. Content of what he had witnessed that night, he began making his way back to the carriage, lightly whistling to himself. I really needed that. I think I read this one last time, as well as Future Regina, so there's that. Let the trade flow. Uh, did I read this one too? By reclaiming and securing the lands of the former Duchy of Absalom, the Saskatchewan has become open to us once again. It did not take long for our traders to establish contact with everyone from the nomadic tribes of the far north, the, some of the newer settlements of Alberta. The royal coffers have never looked fuller. Fantastic. Ah, that must be really throwing a lot of guys in here, then. This is going to take forever, so I'm not really concerned about this one too much, really. And military academy. Eh. How much money do we have right now? Oh, 3,800? Or maybe 3,000? It's not bad. Let's go to this one. You're fully ready to go. Go ahead. Join him, too. You know what? We can afford this. Why not? Clamp down on autonomy. So a little bit of war propaganda would not hurt us. War measures, political actions, uh, drastic measures, supplies, support companies. It's all good. Losses so far. 68 versus 2,000. Almost 3,000. Pretty decent, I'd say. And air uh, is what? Let the trades flow. We're beating the crap out of their, their planes, which is nice. Store the house of Weyburn. I got a lot of your XP being worked on too, so it's very, very good. Timberline, uh, and done with the air doctor, pretty much. Very good. Still 100 air XP here. Uh, ready replacements. That's different. It doesn't matter if one shall fall in the skies. We'll always have two more to take their place. A refined air theory. Thanks to our gift of pilots, we experience less actions, develop old and new techniques to outmaneuver our opponents in the skies. On the job training, lightning raids, it's not bad. Arms merchant contracts. Gas income goes down. Oh. Self sufficient pilots. Interception defense. Ace generation chance. Oh, I'll go with that one. And then what's the Spirit of the Air Force? Freedom of movement. More air superiority. Max speed. Max air speed. Air wing mission experience gain, and we encourage mission control, fighter detection, and air mission efficiency. Semper Invicta. Aces bonus is more ace effectiveness. Better instructors. Um, air support protection. Yeah. A dedicated squadron to protect our close air support will guarantee an easier time for troops on the ground. Absolutely. All right, so this one will give you what? Coordination around the world just gets better for us. That's, that's good. Refreshed ammo. Nice. Sure, why not? The restoration of House Weyburn. For weeks, Alicander shuffled from settlement to settlement and across the crumbling lands of the Metis Congress, leading veteran knight cohorts to crush pockets of rebellion before they could coalesce into a more dangerous fighting force. At last, he finally made it to where he wanted to be all along. As men galloped into the town of Weyburn, reports having recently come in of a group of loyalists looking to flee across the border to link up with other exiles. He ordered a second in command to follow the lead while he took care of personal business. As he galloped to his destination, <clears throat> Uh, the memories of King Yorkton's last words came flooding back to him. Alicander, my boy, the opportunity is finally at your hand. For you finally reclaimed what your bloodline is owned. That was all the young warrior needed to hear. After a few minutes, he had finally arrived. Under the pouring rain, there stood the remains of the ancient Weyburn hamlet. 
passed down from generation to generation until travesty hit. They heard of stories of that day, of the mobs at the, the, the gate, of their defiance and the charcoal and ruins they were rewarded with. Alicander waded uh, through the rubble, making his way through the rotten archway before eventually stumbling <clears throat> upon the grand fireplace situated at the atrium. As he laid atop the man uh, mantelpiece, the family could arms encased in a thick a layer of thick protective glass. He smashed open the casing before slowly lifting out the cloth, clasping it against his chest. He looked around, he had a lot of work ahead of him, but on the day, the fragmented piece of House Wayburn would finally begin to come together again. And with them, the legacy that once brought peace and prosperity to those lands. I shall make you proud, Father. Ooh, look at that. Okay, Corn Wayburn already. Oh, whoops. Well, we probably already recorded that. Also, I'd push my, a lot of my divisions elsewhere just because um, I'd not know where to put them, because I thought New Victoria would probably daily invade us, but, you know. Information, good. Even more special forces. That would be great. Hmm, we're good. I still guess we do want to eat them up too, don't we? More convoys. Here, pain train. Mm. Let's go with something different. Let's go with lead foot, maybe. Or no, maybe ninja. Let's move faster. The return of the ancient regime. Uh, the men rose to their feet as King Europe and galloped into the, uh, into the encampment constructed on the outskirts of Regina. As the city's pacification efforts dragged out into the prolonged bloody guerrilla warfare, I uh, figured the men could do it with a morale boost in the form of a battlefield visit from the Sword of the North. Uh, Yorkton was greeted by the leader of the battalion, a stocky bearded man boasting an eye patch and a weary look. Welcome, my lord. Please, let me show you around. As the king marched through the camp, men would come out of their tents, dropping to one knee in reverence. Yorkton saluted as many as he could, his heart growing heavier with every butchered limb and grievous injury he rested his gaze on. Um, he was eventually led to the center of the camp, where gallows had been erected. Hanging from them were men and women in civilian clothing, wooden signs draped around their necks, reading, Traitors. Yorkton took the soldier to one side. What are you running here? A military camp on a, or a butcher shop? The man was taken aback. Uh, my lord, we are setting an example here. Your king glanced back over the gallows. No, not like this. Tone it down. Limit ex executions only to the staunchest loyalists. We're bringing back the old ways, not ushering in bloody new ones. Yes, command. The commander, looking somewhat dismayed, responded, Yes, my lord. Your king put spent the next few hours speaking with the injured soldiers and getting to know some of the new recruits. In the back of his mind was one prevailing thought. Everything would be all right soon. They just needed to hang on for a little bit longer, just a little bit longer. Most have grown softer with age. The mechanics, universalis. By promising amnesty to the engineers, technicians, and scientists working under the Metis Congress, we have equipped the kingdom with their know-how to deploy combat-ready robots. In doing so, we shall ensure that the flesh of our brave sons and daughters is sure beyond layers of impenetrable steel. That's cool. Well, we'll see. And what else? So we got all this stuff up here done, which is great, so now we can finally focus down here. Expedite payback. We have no future so long as they live. A uh, ceasefire born out of mutual convenience was never going to change that. It matters not if their defenses are readied, which will crush them beneath their boots like icicles in the blossoming spring. And how are we doing here in terms of air bases? More, huh? Nice. Mexico is coming together, falling apart. One of those two. Advanced right here, that's good. Basic drills, yes. Good. Oh, I've not done these guys yet, huh? How much more do they have? No more manpower. They've up to 50 divisions, which is kind of insane. Oh, we broke through. Look at that. Nice. All right, everybody. Y'all get here now. I knew we could break through eventually. Just a matter of when. The Dishonored Son, a stand on the legacy of Manitoba, who is scrubbing his well overdue. The time has come for the prince to bow before his emperor. Good. So we didn't need this time to help build up our infantry as well. And annex these guys eventually, too. I think we can go here next, I suppose.
If you don't go to war with MacArthur, that's going to take... Or, well, Montana chapter, really. The land of good wine and love. Uh, still determination, uncompromised, uncompromising in righteousness. Perhaps not all is run under the white expanse. I alone shall be the judge. And we have a cup of tea or two. Still they're working on them still. No. There you go. Go ahead. Mm, worst part's pretty nice. Uh, Traders last gra gasps. Funny, muttered Yorkton. You are standing about as tall as the last time we spoke. Yes, he remembered a knee-high little thing cow cowering behind his father's leg whenever the adults entered the room. Perhaps that is why the a good admiral figured a, a sound idea to drag the little trope everywhere he went, to toughen him up, really show the world what the kid was made of. And yet, a coward he remained until the very end. The men fed him huddled in a corner of his chamber. Every man, woman, and child in his domain placed himself between be placed between himself and the righteous justice. Down on his knees, head hanging low in the freezing cold of Battleford's main square, Yorkton did not wait for the crowds to form. As soon as he finished spewing his vitriol, he gave a nod to the executioner, who donned his axe without a moment's hesitation. In the meantime, a night of squads had been set to recover the latest trade caches, all to be returned to the royal coffers. As for the residents of the Battleford, it was about the time they had tasted their own medicine, and with the winter season right around the corner too, the children could be left to pick up the pieces for themselves, chuck the stump into the river, and start packing. Oh, cool. Money. Oh, now we get this effort done, huh? Well, they only lost 16,000. Had they submitted to me beforehand, there wouldn't be so many dead. Oh well, poor choices. Are we missing anything here? Ah, anti-tank and demo equipment, huh? A little bit of hope. Beyond the white picket fences and empty facades, it would appear Pleasant Dallas hides something of value within after all. Nice. Good. Train real quick. Sure. Sure. Very nice. 
You can even get everybody here too. The Pearl of Lake Owen Pegosus. Right, thinking will develop and perfectly positioned to become a hub for Kingdom's Eastern Frontier. With just a little bit of elbow grease, the small fishing, fishing settlement could become a true jewel in our crown. Computer armor plating, nice, very good. Anything else we do here? No. Good. Where are hope laws? Another one of Manifest's horrors, or was it? You worked in and hope spoke for hours, a supercomputer gleefully detailing your story and experiences as Pleasantdale's steward. A childlike eagerness, un untroubled naivety betrayed a deadly inclination for subservience. Uh, Yorkton had made his mind up, the machine would be placed in the service of the Empire, as he made a leave. Uh, Hope's digitized voice built it out. By the way, I've been crunching a few numbers. If what you told me is true, it'd be best if you saw the rest of the campaign out. At this rate you're going, Yorkton raises his finger, uh, shushing the AI, you've been given your purpose. Stick to it. Fighting off every instinct to follow up on Hope's objections, Yorkton removed himself from the room. No matter the cost. Oh. That's cool. Well. Not one of these advisors, huh? Well, that's interesting. I'd love to help. Among the children of Manifest, Hope stands as the odd one out. Ever up, Beaton is always willing to lend a hand, and she's already been playing a critical role in the development of Britannia's military technology. It is the Emperor's hope that the AI's knack for warfare will pro prove to be a reliable uh, asset. A reliable path to peace, maybe. Either one, really. Oh boy. Quite an interesting move there, I'd say. Wow, we are dropping them hard. Fantastic. As it should be. Oh, we went here too. Barricades, outpost, supply, route, ambushes. That's different. Only strong survive. Oh, you betcha. Oh, this rate. There's not going to be very much strong. Not very many strong things anyways. We only cut off a thousand, though. It's not enough. Oh, trained war on platoons. Dogs are a man's best friend, so shouldn't everyone have one? We'll make it take some extra training. Making dogs a really good part of our army could ensure that every, nearly every soldier is a little friend to watch her back at all times. Yeah, why not? I like that. The seats are now empty. Lonesome nights uh, m leave a desire to live the past. Something ancient which can only be grasped. I keep telling myself, and yet the memories linger. Monochrome memories is next. Fire teams. Okay. Are we even making fire teams? Oh, we are here. They're right here. Good. Yeah, we're just killing each other anyways, it doesn't really matter. The old summer court, even in his decrepit state, was a familiar sight of the Lord in his younger years. He would travel there with his father and Sophie during the frequent high society parties masquerading as state dinners. Uh, the court itself was gone, and yet the dinner chairs took out of the rubble to defy him. The seat of the Anger family, the wealthiest of them all, and by their side that of the Duke of Dolphin, the house renowned for its lake faring prowess. Just opposite was a seat reserved for the Warwick line, masters of the machine. There's it remained vacant the longest. Next to it, the chair honoring the story of Duchy of Absalon, in the middle of the most lavish of them all, the King's Throne. Uh, the sounds was deafening. The halls once bursting in the seams with cheer and joy, now merely giving way to the creaking of rotting wood planks and the squeaking of rats. Yorkton's resolve felt tested. His frustration with the monarchy's decadence and excesses, struggling against memories of the old Duke of Dolphin smuggling him candy, or the young Duchess of Angers taking him boating, or Lord Absalom showing off his toys. The war memories were washed away by the mon uh, monochrome ruins once more as the soldier bellowed out, My lord, please come out of there, it's about to give. The king glanced at the chairs one last time before climbing out of the rubble. I'll make things right, I promise you. Nice. Uh, manifest perfect sun. 
The blood of Odzirak will not haunt my legacy. I cannot allow it. Will not, after all, manifest ultimate Cerebral noble end, did it not? What was the living proof after all, and what it would appear she's not the only one? Cool. Oh. We're doing quite well here. And then, uh, at that time, the Emperor joined or brawled with Bjorn. Yomungander. Reports have come through that the men of message are managed to corner the scaly horror slithering among the outskirts of Stune. A dark cloud hangs over my personal guard. It will follow me to finish the job. I'm gonna get handsy here. I guess we include these guys in now. That's fine. I think they. Oh, well, I guess they won. Well, they've earned it. Come join the front line, Big Bad Wolf. Destiny, hope, the spectral cabals, and the horrors they spawned. They were all but breadcrumb trails leading to the real treasure trove. Deep beneath the rubbles of Hawkeye, there is out of the final manifest facility. Yorkton would not be taking any chances. Flanked by a dozen of his most elite knights, he moved to storm the laboratory in the early hour of the morning. But once inside, the Emperor's caution faded away in an instant. He rushed ahead, a mesmerizing glimmer of the back of the dark corridors beckoning to him. He was deaf to the man's call his men's calls, as they were to his insatiable ambitions. A weapon, perhaps? Advanced armor schematics? What else could possibly justify the madness unleashed uh, and onto the north? The deaths of countless of his own countrymen? He soon emerged uh, into a bizarrely um, well-lit room, a vast kaleidoscope of monitors adorning each wall. A loud metallic noise broke the silence. He turned to the door behind him, slammed shut. He was alone, or was he? The screens flickered for a moment. The tangled wires beneath his feet, emanating a buzzing, incandescent aura. The displays came on one after the other, each the piece of a larger mosaic displaying the figure of a lupine creature. The one hope warned him of Fenrir. He worked in whisper under his breath. The eldest of the manifest AI siblings, a freaky experiment intended to, to catapult the scientific progress of the old North into a far-flung future, no matter the cost. Fenrir's eyes narrowed in on the Emperor, an ear-piercing digital screech filling the room. Yorkton fell to his knees as he rusted, rustled against the debilitating assault before being flung towards the back of the room by a sudden jolt of a blue lightning emanating from, emanated from a stray wire. With the wind knocked uh, out of his lungs, the ailing re regent struggled to rise back to his feet. In the moment, he recalled Hope's instructions. A little forethought from the AI. Yorkton rummaged through his coat pocket, clasping the cassette tape containing the deactivation codes given to him by Hope. He's been dormant for long, but you can never be too safe, she reassured him at the time. Yorkton's grip tightened as he stumbled over to the central terminal. With the last of his strength, and amid the flurry of chaotic screeching, he pushed the tape into the computer. Fenner's eyes shot open, paralyzed in the kind of vivid fear Yorkton thought impossible for AI to experience. As soon as the Emperor ran the final sequence, the room became engulfed in a blinding white light. When Yorkton came to, he found himself on the floor, surrounded on all sides by his personal guard. He turned to find the doors forced open. The entire facility appeared to have been overloaded. Space, give me, sp give him space, cried one of the men at the back. The knights helped Yorkton back on his feet. Before stepping away, the commander inquired, How are you feeling, sire? Yorkton glanced over the displays. It was all gone, all of it. Could something be, uh, or something as ferocious, something as rotten to the core, uh, have held any value to the Empire? He would never know. Could never know. Suppose he should be glad this thing's gone. Uh, it would never be allowed to run rampant, but was this truly all the madness unleashed by Manifest accounted to? Are mounted to disappointed. We just get a crap ton of stability, which don't get me wrong, I like, but I want more like war sport too. Uh, we're gonna read all these. I want to do this ending the eternal enemy before the Republicans, uh, before the Raiders, before all of this. There were the Reds. I will not rest until the North is purged of this crimson banner. Sunken spirits. As Yorkton trudged towards the battlefield, he glanced over his guard regiment, followed closely in tow. Their heads hung low, their eyes contorted by the fear only seen in the men being led to the gallows. All along the way, not one word was uttered. Yorkton placed a hand onto his hilt. The tremors again. His breathing, his breathing felt labored. The pacification efforts on the lands of the Electorals had proven a bloody affair. Soldiers, constantly falling victim to vicious guerrilla attacks and brutal intimidation tactics. They were at a breaking point. The fighting against the abomination would prove the ultimate gamble, a rallying cry for the ages, or the Empire's indictment distilled. He marched on with little hesitation, and a good brother's plea. So dead set on his ultimate goal he was that the Emperor didn't even notice the so-called good brother, Jan, trotting up to his side. Your Highness, if I may, Yorkton grunted, speak. Jan continued. I've long lived by the good word of the Lord. Now you may or may not share that sentiment. Frankly, you're a good man, devoted to his people, and that is all that matters. 
But I think there's at least one area where a goodly, godly man and a good man can see eye to eye. Forgiveness. Just what was Jan getting at? You might have heard from some of the old timers, but this isn't the first time we've had a run-in with, uh, well, she calls herself Lushy. When the order disbanded and my brothers and I were driven west, we came to blows. Few made it back, even fewer on, the, on their own two legs. As God would have it, I was among them. Yorkton looked on to the middle of the distance. She could have done it, my liege, at any moment. Another bit of sustenance for her to make it through the winter season, and yet she spared me made sure I know it too, he chuckled. We are the ones who came to her on that day, as we are doing now. I know that not that she will be willing to extend mercy once more, but perhaps we could. We could. We could be better. Jan walked away, leaving the Emperor alone with the sots. Let us continue. For the showdown. Yorkton heard them before he could see them. The crackling of gunpowder and the bellowing of artillery echoing from the thickets. They rushed into the clearing just as a handful of men soared past their heads, flung back by the lightning speed flick of the giant snake's tail. I'm glad we actually get to the story of this too. There was a head as large as a full-grown man and a vis uh, viscid core to tap into the uh, darkness of the surrounding woods. Yorkton met his golden gaze. An interminable moment of silence ensued as the snake unhinged its jaw and a gust of wind rushed past the regent, little emperor. Had had that thing just spoke? No, no, no. That must have been the nerves. <coughs> Yorkton snapped back into his senses as another volley of gunfire broke the uneasy quiet. Uh, the abomination recalling back as the cannonballs exploded against its scaly exterior, the emperor unsheathed his sword and rushed to the beast, his personal guard following closely behind. The giant snake, half blinded by the incoming fire, swung its massive tail wildly, narrowly brushing past Yorkton's ear and cleaving one of the charging knights in half. Whoa. The beast then lunged forward, the Emperor rolling to the ground just, just in time, to the sharp mandibles flying overhead. Without hesitating, Yorkton raised his sword into the air, sticking, into, sticking it into a small wound on the side of the snake's neck. The abomination cried out in pain and dropped to the ground, lodging the blade further into his body. It erupted among the nearby soldiers, as Yorkton grabbed the nearest discarded sword and climbed out of the back of the snake's head. He looked around, making sure all could bear witness to what was about to happen. And the moment he met Jan's gaze, his lips were unmoving, but his eyes told a tale of all their own, or rather a final plea. He pierced through the skull, immortalizing his legend, the Serpent Slayer, more division organization, wow. For all time's sake, old friend. Spawn of Lushy. Um. I want to see what this is about. What the heck is this? Spawn of Lushy? Uh. Allegedly. You get a crap ton of breakthrough. That's interesting. Uh, look at all the stuff we have here, too. That's kind of cool. Um. You lose a lot. You just get a lot of breakthrough. More HP, actually. Tiny bit of armor. Tiny bit more armor, huh? Because he does have 20 some armor. Yeah, this one gave him a lot of armor, I believe, as well. Yeah, oh, this one gives you half the armor. Oh, all these give you a little bit of armor, maybe? Maybe not. Um, hmm. That's kind of cool. It's cool that it gives you a lot of armor, which I do like. But I don't think we'll use them. Actually, since we're here anyways, Royal Knights. Uh, demo, anti-tank. Uh, mobile recon. We already have mobile, a lot of mobile stuff here anyways. Yeah, It's interesting, and I don't think that's going to give us anything else for, like, soldiers here, right? Infantry. Probably not. Ro robots. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's good to know, though. Cool to know. But we still got to kill people here, too. And we're literally just killing them all off, so. Nothing that can do can stop us. Uh, sure. So you see scrap bots, cool. Not bad. And we got this tiny little tech to take out too. Uh, I guess these guys too, maybe if we really wanted them. Not bad. We definitely, definitely need more stuff here though. Oh, oh Lushy. Oh, there's the Lushies. Got pots. Cool. And then uh, the new king and queen of Alberta. Checkmate, only the king and queen are left standing. They shall learn to heal. Healing our lands. A squad of knights arrived at Redmond's Square carrying the last batch of comics literature to display within the city library. The tomes soon joined their brethren and a pyre erected that evening. Uh, the flames rose up in a frenzy, a blend of reds and oranges dancing in the reflection of the emperor's unmoving gaze. Yurkin lowered his eyelids as he allowed the warm embrace of course to him. That's the last of them, my lord. Alicandra exclaimed, snapping Yorkton back to reality. Good, responded the Emperor as he readjusted his coat. The knights wind slashing his cheeks. 
Not a peep from these cities, Alexander. Their children shall never know the hammer and sickle. Do I make myself clear? Alexander slammed his fist against his chest, marching off to deliver the orders. The cleansing of history begins with a single stroke of the pen, so the Redmonds are renamed to Edmontons. So, they become cores. Oh, that's great. That's awesome, actually, for us. Good. And then we can go to war with these f fabby, babby dabbies. And Hawkmoon's last war. A pariah Hawkmoon, a rare backbone among a cabal of cowards. Alas, she has finally met her match. What's this one? Ah. The sun never sits on Britannia. I. What was I doing again? How many more days do we have to wait? Oh, we gotta wait quite a few days. Oh, God. We're here for a while then. Oh, let me train. Build ourselves up here. More military factories, yes. Oh, we're out quite a few, aren't we? A royal concession. The knights broke through the gates of the royal hall. The guards cut within, uh, cut down in an instant. Uh, the couple looked down from the throne as Leif Yorkton made his way past the corpses littering the bodies. Or litt littering the room, I should say. Uh, John rubbed his chin. A uh, smirk beaming across his face. It appears the tales are not unfounded. He threw his hands in the air. What We are at your mercy, my liege. He worked and walked up to the couple, scraping out the blood underneath his boots on some nearby steps. You work for me now. Serve the Empire faithfully, and your people shall be keeping their king and queen. In motion for a couple of nights in his entourage, they would stay behind to assure a smooth transition of power. As he began to make his way out of the royal hall, Amy Lee bellowed out, What comes next for my liege? Uh, Yorkton froze. He clasped the doorframe and began muttering to himself. I, the fog in his mind thickened. History, yes. Well, yes. 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 Several different things, yes. We could all this stuff up here if we wanted to. Condo. I don't like that when you integrate somebody, you don't get cores or at least much greater compliance or something like that. I think be, that'd be kind of nice. But who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet. Brain solicitations. You know what? Sure, why not? Sanitation development, trade income? Why not? More building slots, stock it up, but nah. Uh, eh, this is all, all alright. Thruster engines? Well, I guess for this po at this point, we'll just stay on this supplies tech. The Dutch use Pariah. She didn't seem uh, uh, all that. Sitting there against the wall alongside her man. Or men, the blotches of encrusted blood on their faces, nearly rendering each, indistinguish in each indistinguishable from the next, despite it all. She managed to stand out, unlike the rest of her head hung high. Europe to marched over, cupping her chin in his hand, in the last moment of defiance, she let out a beleaguered spit, a red stain splashing over the Emperor's cheek. The knights immediately charged the Yorkton's side, he halted, th halted them, wiping the blood off his face. What to do with you, he muttered, a broken, toothy smile spreading across Hawkmoon's visage. Most of the men he had, had faced electrons on the battlefield before, witnessing friends and colleagues butchered by the legendary commander before their very eyes. What better way to bolster their spirits than letting them experience payback for sand? And yet, a more secluded execution would make reconstruction less of a headache. Yorkton shoved Hawkmoon's head back. Walking over to the leader of the firing squad, he turned to him, resting a hand on his shoulder. Fire well, leave the bodies behind. Take her to the goal. A gowl. I'll handle this personally. It wouldn't be bad. We're going to go with this one. I want more war sport. War sport's nice. So we're done with focuses for now. I think we can do that last one until we get that one done. And so after this war, we're definitely going to go to war with the Montana chapter. They've had more than enough time to you know make themselves stronger as well. So it'll be a relatively fair fight-ish. Oh, boom, boom. This is a lot of planes. Beep, boop, boop. There you go. Tons and tons of planes. It's going to cost a lot of manpower to do this, but whatever. They're here for a reason. Gliders, ew. Cass. There you go. See what you can do. Intensive agriculture is not bad. Improved fertilizer is pretty good. Yes. Prospecting, huh? Nice.
on the factory output wouldn't hurt us. Don't really need it, honestly. Naval stuff, sure. A couple more things for the ships. Should be able to go to war soon. Like I said, we should be able to go to war soon. Very, very soon. Nice. Let's see what you can do. How much damage can we do here, too? 55, 50 ish. Two thousand losses, it's not bad. Could be better though. Ooh, nice. It would make sense for to take these guys out too, but whatever. Alright, so how are we gonna do this? Good luck, you're gonna go up there. You know, I'm gonna sacrifice all this area down here. Let them spread out through here because it's taking some extra time to push through here. Maybe I'm gonna do it too. They can focus on the south because we have only so many soldiers, you know. And I'll be honest, I really want the special forces just to push through fast and quickly through all these guys. So oh. so one, two, three, is there. There. There you go. Pile drive from here to like here. So let's do that quickly. Where are you going? We're gonna need that extra manpower too. Pursuit, good. More monthly population. Every month we get 10,000, roughly 10,000 people. Nice. Good. Manufactories, good. Good, good, good. There you go, because you can. Bramal, Klamath, good stuff. Still working, nice. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, and we also want bingo. Oh, we're not done with them yet. Oh, okay, interesting. Interesting that they push through here too. Yeah, we can't do anything about it. Oh, now the remainders have been called in. Interesting. Uh, Supposed to shells are nice. A little more command power, yeah. We have absolute air superiority. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. The plane should be absolutely getting shredded. These guys will die soon. Sapper's done, good. Use it. Oh yeah. Nice. It's gonna be a big old bloody war. So it always turns out to be. Good. Clothing production. Let's get here. Be fine. Oh, what? Oh, we gained one fully functional geck. Holy crap! That's kind of rare, actually. That's kind of impressive. Not gonna lie, that's actually really awesome. Pink Mountain. Great. See so if you explore hard enough, you'll find a geck. So I never set on Britannia? Of course not. Did we get encircled here? It looks like we did, but we did not. So far. Almost. But not yet.
Oh, even 1% of our population, holy cow. That's kind of good. Actually, that's very good. Not kind of good. It is very good. Sacrifice the south for the north. Actually, how much? Uh, they're about halfway. Towards capitulation. It's good. The flickering flame, they all shall fall. Uh, I see you guys go here too. Um, they let the rivers run red. The corpses piling up. The branches of the trees adorning the capital draped with the corpses of Trot. What? Who? Who was he addressing? He did not feel the, the cold breeze on his face. Is it not the uh, palace balcony? No, he looked around. His chambers before him a mirror. He walked up to it, caressing the visage of the man before him. Could not be him. Could it? No. Cheeks were too sunken. Eyes too bulbous. A portrait, perhaps. Poor form would have docked the squire's wage. What was his name again? A knock. A guard walked in. Sire, where did I mention with him? Are you well? Yorkton glanced out the window. Ah, oh, dark. He could have sworn he had breakfast just a few hours prior. Without a word, Yorkton waved the man off. He lowered himself back into the bed. Would need to be ready this uh, ride at the early hour. Insurrections in the frontier. Was it west or south? Curse Alcander. The boy could never get straight to the point. He had not seen Eleanor in a while. He fell into a deep slumber. Despite it all, Britannia perse uh, perseveres. Oh, more political. Way more political power. Compliance growth beating core creation. We finally get core creation costs down here. Come on. Farther than Empire. Man. And a penny's deal. Raiders and crank robots wrapped in one hellish package. Is it Tuesday already? Uh, I think we're, we're getting insane. We're going insane. So. Can you, like, do your job, please? I want you to exterminate with extremity. Oh, there goes the agent. I knew we'd lose something to clear. It's better. Not great, but it's better. There's a division here and there, you know what happens. Oh, there you are. Take billings. We need and want billings badly. That definitely helps us out. God, Yellowstone's a core too. Jesus. Once a lifetime offer. A retail bot, you say? York to murmur to himself before throwing his head back in frustration. It was also tiresome. Alicana paused for a moment to let the Emperor regain his composure before continuing. Yes, my lord, she... It has pleaded to be left connected to the network infrastructure. In exchange, it is offered the entirety of Cal Calgary's digital reserves or of encrypted schematics. York stared at Alicana for a moment before inquiring. And why can't I hand over both? The knight glanced down for a moment, squinting in his eyes. The processor, I believe it was. Couldn't handle such intense description work in close succession. Yorkton opened his mouth to protest before being cut off. We put it through the ringer, my lord. Worry not, it speaks the truth. Yorkton leaned back in his seat. As the Empire grew more powerful, so too would his defenses, assets, had to flow closely. But the rogue AI being allowed to run free just beneath his people's feet, could he truly make, take the risk? Where every cent is gold and prices soar. We shall see the weapon schematics. Ga oh my god, Gauss weaponry? Three thousand Canadian dollars. Lord knows how this dump managed to accrue such wealth. High tech infl infiltration, guess you say? Sophisticated special forces. Oh my God! Unplug it, Alcander. This is more trouble than it's worth. These are awesome. Holy crap! I love all of these. These are very good. We don't need money, obviously. Gauss is great. We can core this technically by ourselves, and we don't really need a core. Sophisticated special forces. Oh, this goes for everybody. Oh man! Can I get to research that, and then we get that too. That'd be fantastic. The ruminator should be dead here soon, too. There you go. Nice. Bolt action rifles? Well, I mean, what's the point of bolt action rifles when you have Gauss weaponry that we need to research? You know? Oh, and there they go. So much for researching it. Should we just grab the cores? But I think we'll end it there, probably. That's really another focus. So on the right side here. This, their day will come when the devil lives. Untold stories. Untold stories. So, their day will come. So, we got a lot more things to do. We'll do this campaign once again. Someday. But, until that day, I hope you enjoyed the campaign. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. And have a tremendous, tremendous Britannian Empire rest of...
your day.